Hello everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. <coughs> this week the recorder has exploded onto the British media, some of it good, some of it bad and most of it... Of course I had to respond. This seems to have started with a piece in The Guardian, Recorder Fans Warn Instrument Headed for Extinction. Now the piece is ostensibly about the fantastic recorder player Anna Williams at Cheatham School of Music and the fact that she is going to be the first recorder player in 400 years performing a concerto with symphony orchestra at the famous Bridgewater Hall. Anna, that's amazing. However, this message has gotten lost in the usual write-up, starting the article with squeaky instruments, the marmite of the recorder world. It seems to be a law of media that any article mentioning the recorder has to open with a disparaging joke. They describe it as a tool of torture that has terrorised primary schools for too many generations. That in a nutshell, is the current attitude towards music education in the UK. And it's incredibly depressing. Yeah, I'm sorry, I usually try and keep it light and funny on this channel, but I'm actually very pissed off. The thing is, every musical instrument sounds like a beginner playing it in the beginning. A class of violins is going to sound as pleasant to your ears as a class of recorders. But the important thing is we have to let children learn. We have to let all beginners start somewhere. We cannot expect perfection from the beginning. I appreciate that an article has to have a hook, something that the reader can relate to with an unfamiliar subject. Some suggestions for something more constructive. Remember back to your first experience of music making where you learn to read sheet music and experience the joy of playing together in a group. That fixed it for you. The part I actually take umbrage with is the too many generations. Whew. The reason I find this upsetting is because music education and the arts in general have been gradually dismantled in the UK as well as in the Netherlands where I live over the past decade and more. And this perfectly represents the current government's stance on the arts. You've had it for too many generations. Let's crumble that away, shall we? Get past these first couple of terrible opening paragraphs and the article's really informative. It talks about Anna and her achievements, which are fantastic. And it also raises the valid point. Why are we seeing fewer students playing the recorder in primary schools than 10 years ago. One obvious example currently is the corona pandemic. For two years, kids weren't at school, they couldn't play together in groups. The idea of blowing into an instrument, spreading aerosols, and then swapping instruments between students was unthinkable. But, as I'm going to get into later, this is all obscuring a wider, more important point about the state of music education today. Soapbox time! Okay, um, before I move on to the next spot on BBC Breakfast, I'm just going to introduce myself. You might be thinking, who is this lady? My name is Sarah Jeffrey. I am a professional recorder player. That's my job. I studied recorder at the highest level conservatory in the Netherlands and in the UK. I'm a professor at the Royal College of Music um, and I perform and teach to thousands of people all over the world. That's my job tooting my own horn time, if there's something I know what I'm talking about, it's the recorder. And you'll notice I'm not saying the humble recorder, the simple recorder, because it's none of those things. It's the fantastic, amazing, you will be so happy when you get to know it recorder. <laughs> Following the article in The Guardian, there was a spot about recorders on BBC Breakfast. You like lessons, didn't you? No, I, I mean, maybe like, I don't know, three or four. You had lessons too. No. I You're didn't. trying to suggest that I could play the recorder We're and I We're going thought, to have lesson apparently a bit later. We're going to play the recorder live on air. Tune out. in for that. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe don't. No. 24 minutes past <laughs> seven. Let's get the new. In this introduction, I can see we're going to get off to a good start. Oh, why is there so much shame in having learned something as a kid? But you know what? I'm going to approach this with grace. When you start learning something unfamiliar, you might feel self-conscious. It's very British to make these self-deprecating jokes. 
Um, so I'm going to extend them compassion. <laughs> Let's see if my compassion lasts. Oh no, is it the recorders? Despite the fact they're quite obviously taking the piss, um, as a teacher I'd say that there are actually a lot of really good things about this performance. Um, they're listening to one another, their pulse, their rhythm, their playing together is really good and I will attribute that to early years music education that they both admit they've had. So there's a good foundation there, even if they don't necessarily see it. To improve this performance, I would suggest that they tongue use articulation. I can hear that both presenters are blowing <laughs> and that gives it that typical schooly unrefined sound. If you begin with it will immediately sound much more refined. And this other presenter here, Carol, if she was in my classroom, I would have to ask this disruptive student to step outside into the corridor because I don't want my class being disrupted. But you are, of course, allowed to react to your classmates. In a group lesson, I find it helpful to ask my students to listen to one another, to give one positive compliment and one constructive criticism for them to improve. So this listening and reacting isn't a bad thing. It just has to be constructive. Recorders, of course. I mean, bands like Led Zeppelin, the Beatles, they've all used the recorder Are on their sure? Bands. Yes, absolutely. Loads of popular bands have used the recorder. In fact, I did a whole video on it where I think I combined 32 solos from popular songs right here. Um, we've got famous people like Johnny Greenwood of Radiohead is an avid recorder fan. Recently, the recorder has been featured prominently in the soundtrack of The Mandalorian. And just this month, I recorded on the soundtrack of the Hollywood animated series, Bob's Burgers. So yeah, recorders are used all the time because they sound great. Now we've all played the, we were at school. It used to be, you know, standard fare, wasn't it? Every morning. Oh, do you remember that? It's true. When I was at school, uh, I started school, I guess, in... I was born in 1985, so I started school in the 90s. I went to a very normal state school. We had music every single day. It was just part of the tapestry of the school. We sang in assembly every day. I got my musical start through a lunchtime recorder club in year two. I absolutely loved it, though I had no idea that I would become a professional one day. But this lit a fire in me. One vital part of the puzzle is that although presently we have less uh, children playing the recorder at a primary school level, we have more recorder professionals than ever before. However, if we don't keep investing in the earliest years of music education, in 10 years, we're going to see a drop off in professionals, performers and teachers. And that's such a shame. Once you have that gap, then there isn't someone older than you inspiring you and you, and you lose that chain of inspiration. And it is having a knock on effect, not just on the recorder, but on, on many instruments that were difficult to take up again um, oh. post pandemic. Or is it just that parents have hidden them all? years of having to listen to terrible recorder playing like ours. Tom is making such good points and he's being derailed by these presenters. And Tom, how important is it that the recorder, for lots of people, the recorder is like, it's the gateway, isn't it, mm -hmm. to music? If you learn recorder at primary school, you at least get the real basics about music. How important is it to get children just a taste of that? Well, it is important that, that children experience music in all forms throughout their education. Yes. Um, and, and yes, as you say, the recorder is often seen as the gateway to other things. And it's that early experimentation. It's the hand-eye coordination of following music, the breath coordination, which will lead to so many other musical opportunities. And, um, and if you take away one part of the ecosystem, it has a knock-on effect on everything else you know we, we need the pollinators as much as we need the really spread all good points as long as we acknowledge that the recorder is also a fantastic instrument in and of itself it's not only a pollinator 
it's an apex predator. So while we're here, let's give a bit of background information into how the recorder became such a fixture in school's education over the past decades. And for the research on this, I have to thank Dr. Georgina Murphy Clifford, who did her PhD on this subject. In brief terms, early in the 20th century, there was a large movement for more music education in schools, partly pushed by recorder player and pedagogue Edgar Hunt. This was in combination with the early music revival happening around Europe and in America. One idea was to bring the recorder into schools, but Edgar actually pushed back against this. He said, no, the recorder is far too difficult for children to play. The fine dexterity, the breath control, the flexibility of the instrument, for that you need a refined technique. And it's true. One idea was floated to bring a different early music instrument into schools, the consort of viols. By this point, we're getting into the Second World War, resources are scarce, and it's found that you can cheaply produce recorders out of Bakelite. Great, this is an acceptable solution. Let's do it. The recorder is brought into schools. And it's important to mention, although you can make 30 cheap plastic recorders and chuck them into a classroom, a handmade wooden recorder is a work of art. They can cost thousands and they're made by master craftspeople who dedicate their life to this craft. And this brings me nicely to this news story also being picked up by Newsround, the children's part of the BBC. And here they do a really nice write-up of other early music instruments, the harpsichord, the lute, the hurdy-gurdy. I love it when news outlets take the time to add a little bit of early music context. But then, <laughs> The story was picked up by Have I Got News For You. For those who don't know it, it's like a comedy commentary news show in the UK. <laughs> At this point, I just wanna say, I know it's a joke. <laughs> I know it's a joke. I think it's really important to be able to poke fun at yourself, to laugh at yourself. It's basically what I do in every video on this channel. But in a climate where the arts and education have just been stamped on for years, I don't appreciate it. The really telling word here is lucrative. This meme could have said um, a fulfilling career, an inspiring career. And yes, there are thousands of recorder professionals globally enjoying fulfilling inspiring recorder careers, from legends like Michaela Petri to young role models like Lucy Hush. But they've used the word lucrative. Lucrative. Oh, we're talking about money. This ties into our whole drop off in our national curriculum of subjects in the arts and humanities of languages in favour for technical subjects STEM subjects. And this gives the message to young people that your career is only worth it if you're gonna make loads of money. It's not anymore about being a well-rounded human as part of a society. And I'd even like to argue their point. You can absolutely <laughs> make a good living as a recorder player. On a completely unrelated note, signed copies of my new book, My Favourite Melodies, published by Shot, have actually sold out for the second time on my website. They'll be back in stock in a couple of days, so you can pre-order. Link down below. So all of this talk about the recorder, is it in decline? Is it the squeaky marmite of the music world? Is actually obscuring a more important point, and that is the state of music education today. I'm talking from someone in the UK and the Netherlands, but I think it applies in a lot of places because it's not only the recorder that's in decline in schools, it's many other instruments. It's music as a whole. And this is down to our government's steady devaluation of the arts and culture, seen both in funding for the arts and from the gradual removal of music from the national curriculum. And this is such a shame because music is beneficial on so many levels, communication, teamwork, problem solving, empathy, community, dedication, practice, confidence, creativity. It's not about training children to be perfect professional musicians. Learning music basically teaches you how to be a human and playing in an ensemble teaches you how to operate as a member of society. Those are things we sorely need. I'm gonna say something controversial. At the end of the day, 
I don't mind if it's the recorder being taught in schools or ukulele or contrabassoon or theremin or whatever, as long as there is a teacher lighting the fire of music in their pupils. What matters are enthusiastic and passionate teachers with the proper training and the proper funding. That is what is going to inspire our students and we should have that at every level of their education. And at this point, I want to point to a few people who are doing it right because I also want to make the case that globally, the recorder is actually more popular than ever before. There are thousands of fantastic professionals, hundreds of thousands of enthusiastic people playing. And I know that because you're subscribed to my channel. <laughs> In Portugal, we have my colleague Ana Figueras. She has a large group of teenagers playing together for many hours a week at a high level. I was there last October for their early music festival. I played a concert for a packed church. The wider community really come together and this is generously supported by local government. There were even council members at my concert. They're involved, they support it and the results are amazing. Then in Sao Paulo in Brazil you have Renata Pereira and Gustavo Di Francisco who have built up an amazing recorder community at a very high level. Um, they perform and teach and bring together players and teachers from all over Brazil. What I've seen in both of these places it's not only purely the music it's the community and there's so much going on in the UK as well fighting the good fight for recorder we've got Chris Orton who is leading up the European Recorder Teachers Association he teaches at Cheatham's and Birmingham Conservatoire and the Royal Northern and he's doing so many great things there are teachers working tirelessly to bring youth recorder playing to a high level Lou Bradbury Barbara Law Annabelle Knight so many others that I've not had the chance to mention here here, but you're all amazing. Then in the UK, outside of the recorder, you've got so many people doing good work. Saxophonist and presenter Yolanda Brown with her show Yolanda's Banjam, author and professor Nate Holder um, with his award-winning series of Y Books. And on the 4th of July, both Yolanda and I will be appearing in Nate's Y Festival, which currently has over 5,000 primary school signups. So there is so much happening in UK music education from the teachers, from the professionals, but what we sorely, sorely need is proper funding and proper value given to this good work from the government. We need media outlets to take it seriously and in good faith, because I'll be honest, in my line of work, I meet quite literally thousands of people performing and teaching, and their reactions are almost always Wow, enthusiastic. The only places I see these shitty disparaging jokes are in the media, in the openings to articles. I want to say, do better. So how can we go further? I want you to tell me in the comments what music education is like where you're from. If you are a performer or teacher, please make yourself known. If you have something positive to say, please make it known. As recorder players, as musicians and as pedagogues, we have to make our voices heard because I firmly believe that good music education makes the world a better place. It's important. To close, I'm going to leave you with the UK recorder quartet Palisander, who appeared last night on BBC Newsnight, showing how the recorder can be done. More role models for our time. As always, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here in the corner. You can support Team Recorder on Patreon over here. And here's some reasons why the recorder was amazing, if you don't know already. Thanks for watching and have a great day.